Consider an individual. This individual is in acid-base homeostasis, which means that the amount of acid being produced and the amount of acid being cleared is equal. So the pH of the extracellular environment, including arterial blood, is maintained at a physiological optimum of 7.4. One reason this is critically important is because of the three-dimensional structure of proteins. This structure is affected by changes in pH, and these changes in structure will affect whether an enzyme will bind its substrates, whether a receptor will bind a hormone, or whether a membrane transporter will work. However, a number of factors can distort pH. One mechanism is by suboptimal ventilation. Here I've drawn a typical spirometry trace with a tidal ventilation of 500 milliliters and a breathing frequency of 12 breaths per minute. This gives a total ventilation of 6 liters per minute. Now imagine that the same individual is breathing less than normal. Because of the reduction in minute ventilation, the amount of fresh air reaching the alveoli is reduced, so the amount of CO2 in the alveolar sacs will steadily increase. This reduces the diffusion gradient, causing less CO2 to move out of the blood, and the amount of CO2 in the post-alveolar blood to increase. Even though it isn't strictly an acid, CO2 is often referred to as the respiratory acid because of the way it combines with water to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a weak acid which dissociates into protons and bicarbonate. And this whole equation is in an equilibrium. So if something in it changes, it will shift the balance of the chemical reactions to correct the. In this case, Increased CO2 promotes the rightward reaction, which results in an excess accumulation of protons. So if we did an arterial blood gas, we'd see a lower than normal pH, a higher than normal PCO2, and a normal base excess. This is because the bicarbonate concentration is correct for the PCO2. These findings would indicate that the patient is in a state of uncompensated respiratory acidosis. To correct this imbalance, the body will try to reduce the proton concentration, and this is achieved by increasing the bicarbonate to bind some of the excess protons and normalise the pH. This happens in two phases. Firstly, an acute phase, where CO2 moving into the erythrocytes combines with water in the presence of carbonic anhydrase to form bicarbonate, which in turn moves out of the cell via the AE1 transporter. The increased plasma bicarbonate concentration pushes the carbonic acid equilibrium backwards, promoting the binding of protons to form the conjugate carbonic acid, thereby increasing pH. Secondly, the chronic response is to increase the amount of bicarbonate reabsorbed in the kidneys, providing a longer term mechanism for the stabilisation of pH. Once the corrective mechanisms are in action, a blood gas would show that the pH was still low, although we would expect it to be closer to normal than before. PCO2 is still going to be unchanged unless the breathing pattern is being corrected and the base excess will now be high. This is because the plasma bicarbonate will be higher than expected for the PCO2. This patient could now be classified as having a partially compensated respiratory acidosis. Eventually, the compensation will be enough to return the pH to within the normal range. Once this happens, the blood gases would show a normal pH a high PCO2 and a high base excess. Now the patient could be classified as having a fully compensated respiratory acidosis. We can produce a very simple time change graph for these variables. Before the change in ventilation, the pH, PCO2 and base excess are all normal. Once the patient starts to hypoventilate, the PCO2 steadily rises with a match drop in pH and no change in base excess. Once the compensatory mechanisms kick in, the PCO2 remains unchanged, the base excess starts increasing, which reduces the proton concentration and causes the pH to climb. In the fully compensated state, the pH is normal, but the PCO2 and base excess are both elevated. We can also inspect what happens if an individual were to hyperventilate. The increased tidal ventilation with the same breathing frequency will massively increase the minute ventilation. This will also increase alveolar ventilation and increase the amount of fresh air reaching the respiratory membrane. 
This will cause a reduction in alveolar PCO2 and an increase in the concentration gradient for diffusion. More CO2 will move out of the blood and the postcapillary blood will have a lower than normal PCO2. We can see that this will promote the leftward shift of the carbonic acid equation which will cause more protons to be lost from solution thereby increasing the pH matched to the decreased arterial PCO2 and a proportionately normal base excess. This can be classified as an uncompensated respiratory alkalosis. To correct this, the body will try to increase the proton concentration in the blood. This response does not have an acute phase, but chronically it will reduce the amount of bicarbonate reabsorbed in renal nephrons. It will also increase the bicarbonate secretion in the collecting ducts. A reduced plasma bicarbonate concentration will cause more carbonic acid to dissociate into protons and bicarbonate. As a consequence, pH will still be higher than normal, PCO2 will be abnormally low, and base excess will also be low. This is because of the increased bicarbonate excretion. This patient is now in a state of partially compensated respiratory alkalosis. Eventually, the bicarbonate excretion and increased dissociation of carbonic acid will cause proton concentration to normalise. The pH will return to normal. The blood gas will show a normal pH, but PCO2 and base excess will be lower than normal. This is now a fully compensated respiratory alkalosis. As before, we can track these changes on a time plot. Predisturbance or variables are within normal range. A hyperventilation triggers a decrease in arterial PCO2 and a rapid increase in pH with no change in base excess. Once the renal compensation kicks in, the base excess will start to fall, causing pH to return towards normal, but PCO2 is still unchanged. Once pH is back to normal, you can see that the PCO2 is still low, assuming the patient is still hyperventilating of course, and that the base excess is still low because the kidneys are compensating.